Good morning, you guys. Got the uh, croissant breakfast sandwich ready to go. But today I'm gonna be taking you guys to a really cool lake. Um, there's gonna be some trout, some pike, maybe walleye and perch we come into. But today's focus is gonna be still water fishing for trout on the fly rod. Um, I'm gonna be from a pontoon boat, but pretty much every tactic I share today can be done from the shore as well. You know, if you're wading or if you're just straight up on the shore. Um, I know when I first started fly fishing, I was only going to lakes pretty much. My dad would take me to lakes and I'd use my birthday as an excuse to, to be taken to a river. Um, and so rivers were, you know, few and far between. And so I really had to learn how to fly fish on a lake. And that was the hardest thing for me. And it was actually really discouraging. And I wanted to help you guys, hopefully, you know, skip my learning curve and make it more enjoyable for you guys, especially if you're getting started out. So today I'm gonna to be focusing on some coronament fishing um, with an indicator and without an indicator. I'm gonna be doing some small um, streamer fishing, wet fly fishing, and maybe some dry flies. Um, if they're active, it's raining pretty hard, so I'm not sure if we'll get on any dry flies today, but we'll see what the weather's like later on today. But other than that, I'm gonna go ahead and get on the road. Um, I don't wanna keep you guys waiting any longer. Let's get into this video. two fly rods today. So I know I told you guys today is going to be about trout fly fishing still water, which is what my five weight echo fly rod with the sage drill set up for. I have two chronomids on there. Not sure if you can see that, but there's a black one and an olive one way up here with some silver ribbing to it. Then I also brought my eight weight with a big streamer on it, big bunny streamer on it. Um, just in case I see a pike or something, or if I just think there's a you know a spot that there might be a pike. I can go ahead and take a few casts. Try to catch a pike on the fly rod. And if I see a pike, doesn't want the fly rod, brought a bait caster, got a jerk bait on there right now. And then I got an ultralight rod, which I have a little curly tail grub on. I plan on jigging that out deep, just seeing what I could come across. I'm sure if I were to throw it out just in the open and just crank it in, some trout would eat it too, but that's not the intention of it. I am, you can see the sun's not up yet, but it is light out, which is nice. Um, really nice, actually. And I'm going to check the angle of the GoPro. Looking good. Not sure if you guys can see the hoodie, but I'm going to tell you more about that later on. All right, I think we can go ahead and head out now. Battery says 92%, so well, I mean, we'll see. I don't know if those are weeds down there or what, but we're 17 feet of water right here. I, I believe that, yeah, I believe that. Now, the reason I'm heading to the direction I'm going is because this is an inlet, and oh, and a fish rose right there. Perfect, 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 perfect. So I'm heading towards the inlet because there's gonna be warmer water coming in. The side's gonna heat up faster when the sun does come out too. And so not only is that I'm gonna get the fish a little more turned on, but bugs, you know, all the aquatic insects are also gonna hatch based on, on temperature. On water temperature plays a, a huge role on hatches. And so you come to warmer water, you're more often than not gonna have more hatches and bigger hatches. So that's why I'm heading this direction. All right, all right, all right, let's go. Catch some trout. So like I talked about when I was getting out here, I have two chronomids right now. One olive and one black, both of which I tied last night. I have an indicator on here. Um, the reason why I decided to bring the fish finder today, it's not a necessity, um, but a lot of times if you have a fish finder, you can see what depth the trout are running through, you know, below you and around you. And you could adjust your strike indicator to match that. 
So if you have the ability to have a fish finder, you know, if you're on a belly boat, if you're on a pontoon and you don't have a hummingbird or some big fish finder like this, I also have a deeper, or the Deeper Pro Plus, and that thing is awesome. Hook it up to your phone. Um, what I did was I bought a, a really cheap tablet off of someone up from Facebook. It was like a 10 inch tablet. And you know, not good for anything else, you know, terrible camera and all that old, but for running the Deeper Pro app, perfect. And I just bring a portable charger and you have, you know, eight to 10 inch screen with a fish finder that you could just tie off to a string and have it drift in front of you. So if you guys are interested, I will leave a link below um, to the Deeper Pro Plus and just to the Deeper in general. This technique works in any, any still water um, whether it's a pond, a, a lake or reservoir, a, you know, a beaver pond even. I've, I've done this technique in so many places in just still water in general. There's a fish right there. There we go. All I did was give it a little twitch. First fish of the day. Didn't take too long. Looks like it's a little rainbow. And he ate the second fly, which is the black one. And it's also deeper so that you want to keep in mind which flies they eat for color preference and also for depth it always helps if you put your finger up behind this fin bone i don't know why but it helps calm them down in my experience you can see that coronamid right in the top of his mouth black i use some blue flash as ribbing and there's a gold ribbing at the butt section of it just for a little hot spot nice little rainbow a little stalker it looks like the tail's a little messed up and deformed and uh there's the elegant release right there that's what i'm talking about and he came from right over here right in the shallow water so another method of fishing coronamids in still water is without an indicator and you could use it with a floating line and you know a typical leader or you could switch over to a little more advanced technique which is sinking line whether it's sink tip or intermediate line and you could slow retrieve these coronamids into you at a deeper depth um, which a lot of times can do great. I mean, I've done that a few times. Um, I've mainly done it. I've mainly done it with floating line and just an extra long leader, and I've had great success. Probably the best time to do it, simply because you know these they're not going to have that much action. The flies, because there's no chop on the water, and so doing a slow retrieve in, you get to to cover a lot more water, which will, of course. Um, increase your odds of com coming across a fish, but it'll also give you some action to get them to, to bite. There's one. Soft take. The bobber didn't didn't even go under. It was actually just kind of gliding to the side. This one's a jumper. Oh, oh man. Nice little trout. Let her go. When you make your cast, I like to let it sit for a good, you know, 10 seconds or so because that first land, that initial sink, is already enough action. Um, you could consider that like your first strip. That's already enough action to get their attention. And if there's a fish nearby, they're going to come in after it. And that's probably when you're going to have your most luck is on that initial um, drop. Oh, my hand, and he did in fact take the olive right there. He took the olive. Chronomate, and that just goes to show, you know, having two different colors can pay off. Who knows if he would have eaten the, the black one. Let her go real quick. No point in keeping her out too long. This one so far, not a bad trout. Bleeding by his face, but he should be fine. Wet my fingers. Look at the, that cheek on it. All wrapped up. He ate the black chronomid, so the deeper one. The cheek on that guy is very pretty. Very nice. I honestly don't know what number of fish this is. Oh, oh, no, 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 please, please, I just want to get you done quick. There we go. <laughs> From an Arizona tea. I was supposed to buy one of those um, aluminum foil pans to use you know like one-time use ones to to make these barbecue wings in but uh this will have to do <laughs> uh. 
He ate the olive coronamid. Nice. Little rainbow. Number like 50, I don't even know. Try the fish on the fly. There's him. There he is. Nice. Haven't seen any rise for a while, but you know what? Probably still fish around. Not a bad looking rainbow right here. Chunky. Short and chunky, man. He is real chunky. Flip my hand. This one came on the black coronamid. Chunky little guy, beefy. There we go. That's a nice one right there. Go ahead and let it go. Oh man, I'm uh, working on the video right now for the Corona Mid video. And I just realized that half of my videos from the GoPro cannot be downloaded or edited. Um, the files are corrupted, and uh, it was a sad day. The fish, the biggest fish of the day, the thumbnail fish actually, is on one of those corrupted files. So, a little disappointed, but there are fish caught. There were fish caught in this video, and honestly, I'm glad about the knowledge that I was able to share in this video. Um, despite losing a lot of footage, there's a lot of valuable information I hope you guys also thought were, was useful in this video so I apologize there weren't more fish in here um, I don't know what happened I think there's something wrong with the SD card I have to get a new one but I appreciate you guys tuning in today uh, make sure to like and subscribe join me on on these adventures I'm gonna put on a lot more if you don't follow me on Instagram already follow me at jerkbait underscore pro um, I post a lot more regularly on there a lot of stuff that doesn't see YouTube goes on Instagram um, personal stuff and I also have a hoodie that I have dropped some merch for my blog, Fishing the Rockies blog. If you guys are interested in checking those out, um, I did wear it in some parts of the video. You might have been able to see it when I did the intro to this video. Um, other than that, I have another fly fishing video coming out soon that will really introduce the, the hoodie to you guys. But first link in the description will be my blog for the latest blog for you guys to read. Second link will be the hoodie. So if you guys are interested in getting some merch, check out the second link in the description. First link will be the blog post of oh, first link will be the blog post um thank you guys again make sure to like and subscribe join me on these adventures follow me all of the above putting out a lot more content for you guys thank you